Hi guys, thank you so much for all the support you guys have shown to my channel. Uh, thank you so much uh, for all the messages. So this video is going to be about how to become a commercial pilot in India in 2024. A lot of people uh, messaged me on Instagram asking this in on my YouTube channel. So this video is going to be about that. So uh, to become a commercial pilot in India, you need physics, maths and English in class 12. Uh, there is no requirement of any uh, college degree or any graduation, uh, at least not up till now. So you only need physics, maths and English. For those of you uh, just like me who did not have physics, maths or English in class 12, you can do it through an open board. I did through NIOS. You can just check on their website, Google NIOS and you can whichever particular subject that you did not have, you can just go on their website, give the exam and get your mark sheet in, and you are good to go. So after your class 12, first thing before you invest any money in this field because it's a very expensive field, uh, is I would advise to complete your medicals. So you are required to uh, pass two medicals to become a commercial pilot in India. Firstly, it's a class 2 medical and the second is a class 1 medical. So I'll start with class two. A class two medical, there's a list of medical practitioners given by the DGCA uh, where you can get your class two medical done. Uh, they're spread out pan India. So you can go to any of these medical practitioners. A class two medical is valid for two years after which you have to renew it. Uh, and after you get your class two medical, you can apply for your class one medical. Now class one medical, uh is a little more stringent although uh, most of the doctors today who are doing a class 2 medical they also do the test that you will have in your class 1 medical so there is no uh confusion or there is no as such suspense in your mind that if you will pass your class 1 medical or not so you can just do that so after you do a class 2 medical you give your class 1 medical a class 1 medical is valid for only one year and you have to renew it every year uh and class 1 medical can only be done by uh, very few place, places that the DGC has prescribed. Uh, I know, I, I understand that they've updated the list uh, very recently. But uh, as per my knowledge, so there are currently four Indian Air Force centers, which is Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad and Calcutta. Or not Calcutta, maybe Assam. I may be wrong about this. I'll try to put the list uh, in the description. And then there are four or five civilian hospitals that they have now allowed out of which uh, Apollo Hospital Delhi is a new addition then you have Apollo Hospital Chennai uh, Nanavati Hospital in Bombay and I think they added uh, two more hosp uh, private hospitals in uh, I think Central India but I'll try to put that list so after you get both your class 2 class 1 medical now you can go ahead and start your aviation journey uh, first thing that you will need to do is get a get something called a computer number. Now, a computer number is basically a serial number which is allotted to every single pilot, uh, which will remain with you for the rest of your life. Uh, this is done through the EGCA platform. EGCA is a unified portal that is created by DGCA uh, for you to apply for all your different uh, licenses and keep a track of your uh, entire history as a pilot. So you can just Google EGCA and you will have to create an ID and things like that. So once you get your computer number, then you can uh, proceed ahead and plan out about your exams and flying. So to become a commercial pilot in India, you need to clear six exams uh, and you have to get 200 hours of flying. Now the six exams these are basically for people who are doing it from India uh, you have the six exams for people who are not doing it from India we will get, get to that uh, at a later stage so the six exams are air regulations, air navigation, air meteorology uh, technical general, technical specific and RTR now five of these papers are conducted by DGCA while RTR which is radio Tele telephony restricted uh, is conducted by the DOT department of telecommunication under the WPC wing. Uh, so these are the six papers that you have to clear. But if you're flying from outside of India, you, you do not have to clear technical general and technical specific. Only four papers you have to clear. So 
assuming let's say everyone is doing it from india i'll try to keep it as detailed as possible so to prepare for all these six papers uh, it depends on the individuals a lot of people today are confused if they should go for ground, ground classes or if it, they can study it by themselves uh it completely is to uh, any individual uh for air regulations and air meteorology frankly you can prepare it by yourself there is rk bali uh, which is a very detailed book on this and you can uh, easily prepare for both regulations and meteorology through this book for navigation and technical general yes i think most of the most of the people today they have trouble uh, clearing uh, these two papers so you can maybe go for ground classes for these two papers but all up to you i am not uh, suggesting you to do anything per se decide as per your own need i personally i uh, decided to go for ground classes for all my papers because uh, i was coming from law and i did not have any idea about the field so i decided that it will be better for me so that i don't waste any time uh, planning as to how to clear the paper now when it comes to the exams uh, they are conducted uh by dgca every uh every four months you have a regular attempt or i think every three months you have a regular attempt and every single month between the regular attempts you have an on demand attempt this was this was started very recently uh, a couple of years back i think after covid uh so you can basically apply and give an exam every month there is an attempt and there is no requirement for you to give all these six papers uh in one single shot you can plan accordingly you can give uh, pair uh, any of the six subjects and you can give two papers at one go two papers one go you can plan to give all six together uh rtr as i said is not conducted by dgc so rtr is not held every single month it is conducted every every two months uh so six attempts for rtr uh and it happens in every in different cities but while for the other five papers you have centers in delhi bombay uh bangalore i think but all the metro cities but for rtr uh, there is an attempt which is done uh in a particular city for so for instance let's say uh this time the attempt is in hyderabad then the next attempt will be in calcutta so you will have to go to calcutta if you are giving the calcutta attempt so it does for rtr you have to plan accordingly uh while for the dgca papers you have you can choose a center as per your closest city so this is about the exam so you can apply for the exams on the dgca portal uh plan to give the papers according to your own need uh if you do not so to pass an exam you need 70% out of 100 marks uh you will have to get at least 70 to pass that particular exam this is for all the five papers not for rt rt is a subjective criteria uh for these five papers you just need 70 out of 100 and you will clear the exam uh so you can plan accordingly which paper you want to give uh, i gave all my uh papers in one single shot and thankfully i cleared all of them they are not that difficult if you study hard if you study well and prepare well i think you will be able to clear this paper clear these papers very easily uh for rt rt you, there are two parts in rt first is you there's a there's an oral portion where you have uh, a situation five questions given and there's an examiner which is sitting right behind you and, and rt is about radio communication so you will have a situation where you have to give radio calls you will wear a headset the examiner behind is acting as an apc and you uh have five questions which are giving you different situations and you uh make radio calls so if you clear your part 1 then you go to part 2 part 2 per se deals with uh there is an interview as such technical interview one there will be an individual from dgca and one individual from dot and both of them will ask you technical questions about navigation aircraft systems and things like this then it can be about anything uh, rt is a very tricky paper uh so it can be about how how a mixer works how does a tube light work how what is the difference between a turbo fan or a turbo jet so it can be very generic related to aviation or it can be about things in general so uh that is about the papers once you've cleared all your papers then you have 200 hours of flying now one thing i here i that i want to point out is 
at a lot of people because to become a commercial pilot you have to clear these papers and you have to get 200 hours of flying but there is no requirement for you to clear the papers first and then go for flying but i think in this field anyone will always suggest you to first clear your papers no matter what anyone tells you please clear your papers first and then go for your flying it's always better easier for you if you study the, for the exams clear them firstly it makes you more technically sound when you go for your flying so because you now you know the systems and you know how things work in general uh, and secondly once you're completed with your flying and then then if you have to clear your papers uh, it's a little headache for you also because you uh, after the flying you want to get to an airline now and things like that so i would strongly suggest that please clear your papers first and then go for your flying okay now let's assume that all papers are done when it comes to flying uh, you have to do 200 hours of flying in india uh, now a lot of people are confused if they should do their flying from india or from outside of india now that question deals with two things firstly the cost that is involved in your flight training and secondly the time that a flight school takes now in india uh, per my knowledge because i have flown from us uh, but i did my conversion flying in india and uh, i did a lot of market study so per my knowledge in india it takes about 1.5 years for you uh, maybe more to complete your flying from a flight school in india and uh, the cost comes to uh, I think around 45 lakhs, uh, but don't quote me on this because I've not flown from India, so I'm not a good source. Uh, mm -hmm. I would suggest to complete your flying from South Africa because uh, I have a few of my friends and they did their flying from South Africa and they are doing it at a very reasonable cost. I think they're doing uh, the entire commercial pilot training along with multi engine uh, at around 34 to 37 lakhs uh, in 12 months which is a very reasonable package uh, i think uh, if i was aware about this when i went to us before i went to us i would have probably also gone to south africa because us is a little more expensive uh, so that's something that you can decide for yourself uh, talk with people contact flight schools understand how many students they have how many flight uh, aircrafts do they have how many instructors do they have but make uh, uh make an informed decision about this do not take this decision hastily it will save you a lot of time and a lot of uh worry because sometimes you get stuck up in some flight school because of a lot of logistical issues so uh decide accordingly so once you complete your flying as well and let's say you did your flying from india so the, after the 200 hours of flying uh you apply for your commercial pilot license which is through the EGCA portal uh, till this point you will anyway be very aware about uh, your EGCA everything would be updated your number of hours and everything so you apply through the EGCA portal uh, for your commercial pilot license it takes about around two months for your CPL to come and that's about it for some people who are doing it from outside of India just like me after you complete your flying from outside wherever that country is uh, you have to come to India and you have to do something called conversion flying. Now, conversion flying uh, requires you to go to an Indian flight school and pass certain checks, flight checks. Uh, so there will be a day check, a night check, you will have an instrument check, you will have a 250 nautical mile uh, day cross country, a, one, uh, a 150 nautical mile night cross country. So you have to give these five checks and after these five checks, then you will, you can apply for your Indian commercial pilot license uh, through the GCA platform. So that's about it. That com uh, that uh, comprises the entire process of how to become a commercial pilot in India uh, in 2024. And yes, I've tried to cover everything. Uh, please leave any comment if uh, you are in doubt about any particular scenario uh, i will try my best to answer all your queries uh, so yes thank you so much for watching i hope this helped you and good luck on your aviation journey guys the indian market is looking very good so cheers